G'day, you're with Gusto, and today as part two of my 10 part ME chili challenge, I am going to consume a poblano chili, native to the region of Puebla, Mexico. It burns up to a mild 1500 Scoville heat units, and it's just another step on my way to the world's hottest chili, the Carolina Reaper. I'm doing this to raise awareness for ME because it is desperately underfunded and really can be cured. But gusto, you say, doesn't everyone claim that their disease is desperately underfunded? Dude, I don't know. Do you know how long it would take me to ask everyone? <laughs> Seriously, ME is the most underfunded condition and allow me to demonstrate exactly why. Before I do, let me just point out that I am a CPA. I worked at a large multinational company as a management accountant before ME forced me to quit. So you can trust me on these numbers. I'll let them do the talking. Consider the six largest diseases affecting the USA, according to the World Health Organization. Heart disease, cancer, Alzheimer's, depression, diabetes, and HIV. How much do these diseases burden the US economy each year? The best possible metric is a measurement known as disease adjusted life years or DALIs. But since no reliable DALIs exist for ME, which in itself is another problem of there not being a good test for ME, the second best measurement we can use is economic burden. According to the latest sources, each disease represents this much economic burden to society each year in billions. The burden includes not only medical costs, but indirect costs such as disability benefits, lost taxes, reduced productivity, as well as informal care by family and friends. Allow me to add in ME slash CFS, which weighs in at 24 billion of economic burden annually. Okay, so that's the cost of the disease. Now let's show how much funding each disease received from the US National Institute of Health, the NIH, in 2016. So what you can see here is that funding is kind of all over the place. HIV is getting a ton of funding, whereas a condition like depression ain't getting much love. Now let's add in ME funding. Oh wait, it's already there. If you can't see it, I'll zoom in. The disease got $0.007 billion last year, or $7 million for 24 billion in burden. This is very concerning, especially considering that ME often leads to secondary conditions such as heart disease, stroke, diabetes or cancer from physical inactivity and mental health conditions such as depression and anxiety as a result of social isolation or disbelief cast onto sufferers by society. Okay, so back to the graph. What should funding ideally look like if it were proportionate with disease burden? First, let's simplify this graph by boiling down each pair of columns into a single column, showing how much funding each disease receives relative to its economic burden. For every dollar a disease burdens the US economy, how many cents it receives in government funding? For example, heart disease and stroke receive 1.6 billion in funding but it cost the economy $320 billion. That means it received $0.005 or half a penny on each dollar of burden. So let's ask this, what would the graph look like if expected funding was matched with economic burden? In this example, there's $1,277 billion of burden against $12.8 billion of funding. Now don't lose me now because it gets easy. It happens to work out neatly to one cent of funding for every dollar of burden. Let's put this in purple and call it expected funding. Now here's what I want to focus on, the ME funding mismatch. The data suggests that if the disease were funded commensurate with its burden, it deserves one quarter of a cent per dollar burden. Yet in reality, it receives less than one third of one tenth of one cent. Let's translate this into dollar terms. It would suggest that ME requires $240 million in annual NIH funding. It's clear, ME funding is too damn low. In a reassuring coincidence, $250 million 
is the amount that Patient Advocacy Group, ME Action, has requested to Congress in an attempt to have ME funding match its burden. Claims that have been echoed in The Washington Post and The Atlantic. There is some good news. The NIH recently announced that they would nearly double ME funding from $7 million to $13 million annually. Great news, but it still leaves a cavernous gap of $227 million. The USA is the world leader of biomedical research, so we need to continue the pressure to have the NIH adequately fund a cure for ME. I also want to touch on the Australian Department of Health's efforts to progress our cause. Thanks to help from Aussie advocacy group Emerge, Senator Scott Ludlam raised the issue why of the $1.6 million in MACFS research since the year 2000. And about two thirds of the funding appears to be going into research that, however worthy it may be, actually has nothing at all to do with MECFS. Uh, can you either... Uh, can you either correct the record or point out... How this research actually is directly relevant to, to the questions that I asked. The department took Senator Ludlam's question on notice, and a year later, we still have yet to hear an answer. If Australia is to take the lead on ME funding, our government ought to be contributing $17 million per year to ME research and advocacy, less than 2% of the $892 million 2015 funding the National Health and Medical Research Council had. Remember, this money isn't wasted. It repays itself tenfold once people like me are able to return to the workforce, pay taxes, plus we reduce the strain on the health system. I'm asking for your help to get our demands known. This can be done in one or all of the following ways. You can at least pick one. Contact your elected officials and express your concerns. ME Action recently posted a fantastic article on ways to go about this. Donate money if you can spare it. In the description below is a list of institutions who are doing excellent research and advocacy for ME. Like or share this video. Do an ME Chile challenge yourself and post it to your socials. And lastly, help me get celebrity traction. In my mind, this is the most crucial step to demystifying the condition and destigmatizing it in the eyes of the public. None of the celebrities I challenged last episode responded, so I'm just going to challenge them again. Sure. Do you Flee. Emma Blackery. Was finally diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome. Morgan Fairchild. It's because Morgan Fairchild has had this disease. And Stuart Murdoch. It's not even a, a bit of paper that says I have ME. Time to chow down. Oh. It's hot. This is definitely getting into spicy territory. Oh gosh. This is so much hotter than the Red Bull horn last episode. <laughs> I can feel my eyes watering, my nose running. And I don't know if I've turned redder, but I feel hotter. Seeds too, right? Mmm. Now my lips are burning. I did it. Thanks for watching. Next episode, I venture into the heartbreaking journey of what I've gone through with ME and how it's led me here. So subscribe if you don't want to miss that. Peace. Burning.